Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be installing Arch Linux into our Raspberry Pi Proxmox. So let's get started. Now in my last video where I installed Proxmox, in case you guys missed it, I'll leave a link right on the top left over here. And somebody did mention in the comments about installing Arch Linux into Proxmox for our Raspberry Pi, which I thought was interesting because it's something I would do. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, this might work on ESXi. I haven't tried it yet, but the, the idea behind it is the same. You're just loading in ISO and just installing Arch. So to jump into it, Obviously, we're going to have Proxmox installed into our Raspberry Pi and logged into it. I've already tested it and surprisingly, it runs really well. So the first thing we're going to need is actually this ISO that just recently came out in May 10th of 2022. And this is an ARM ISO. So this will actually allow you to install Arch Linux into our uh, uh, Proxmox. Now, if you guys are familiar with how to install Arch Linux already, you could just download this ISO and continue on. Otherwise, I'm just going to show you how I do it and you could just follow along. But yeah, the steps are pretty much the same uh, installing Arch Linux into basically in a computer. So first we're gonna have to jump over to local, go into the ISO image and download that ISO. Now I already did this, so I'm not gonna do it again, but yeah, from here you could actually download from URL and just grab the URL from here and it should just transfer across. So we're gonna create a new VM. I'm gonna call this 701 and I'm gonna call this Arch. Next, the operating system, we'll just leave this local, do not use any media. Next on system, we're gonna change this over to, oh no, we're gonna leave this I, I440FX and change this over to UEFI. And then we're gonna create a EFI storage over there in local. Next, we're gonna check out the disk, make sure it's on SCSI. Uh, the drive doesn't matter. You could minimum probably 10 gigs or something, but 32 is fine for me. I'm just going to use that. Uh, next up is the CPU. I'm going to give it two cores and it runs really well on two gigs of RAM. If you got more, you could probably give it more. In my case, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to leave it in two gigs. Hit next for the network. You can leave that as well and then go into confirm and finish that up. Now give it a minute and this will actually turn into like a, like that basically. I'm just waiting for the lock icon to finish. Once that is done, we're gonna have to do some settings over here. So let me make this a little bit bigger. All right, uh, from here on, we're gonna go into hardware and we'll remove the CD-ROM because we can't use IDE. So we're gonna remove that, hit yes. And we're gonna add a new CD-ROM drive, but this time we're gonna use SCSI instead. So we're gonna keep it in SCSI 2. Storage, we'll use local and our ISO, which is the Arch Linux. Hit create. And then we're gonna go into options and change the boot order from SCSI 2 and move that to the top so it knows to boot from that CD. So I'm gonna hit okay. And that is it for that. So here we could just hit start. Okay, so we're just gonna boot into this installer right here. Honestly, everything works really well. Um, even the installation part was pretty good. So um, again, this is a whole guide now to installing Arch Linux, uh, similar to what you would find online or any guide that would install in Linux. The only thing that we changed is the grub install. So you might want to fast forward to that part, which I'll leave, you know, indentations into a timeline. All right, so let's begin. So the first thing we need to do is figure out what drive we have. So we're going to do F disk dash L and our drive that has 32 gigs is SDA. So that's good to know. So F disk slash dev slash SDA is the drive we're gonna be working with. Um, from here, we're gonna create a new partition, primary, and we're gonna keep the default number on the first partition, but this one we need to make as an EFI partition, so we're gonna do 512 M, oh, sorry, first sector, and then plus 512 M. There we have our first sector, I mean our first partition, but we also have to change the type of this, and if you wanna list it, what we're looking for is EF, which is EFI. And there we go, we changed it to uh, EFI partition. And now we need to create a second partition. So we're gonna do N primary for P, second partition. It'll start right here from the first sector and it'll use up the entirety of the drive, which is 3.1 gig, 31.5 gig. And we do W to write. 
Now that we got the two partitions, we do have to format them and convert them to the drives that we want. So what we're going to need to do is make fs.fat-f32 for fat32, dev sda1. And then here we're going to do mkfs.ext4 dev sda2. So now we formatted the second drive to ext4. From here we could do pacman syy and this will just update all the packages so we could do a pack strap. Now we are going to need to mount dev sda2 which is our main partition to mnt. So there's a folder slash mnt. And here we're going to do pack strap mnt base linux linux firmware vim and nano just in case. And here it's going to take depending on your internet speed maybe 10 15 minutes or so. Uh, maybe even less if you got faster internet speed, but yeah, it's not too bad for this process. Also depending on the desktop you're planning to choose um, that also might cause an uh, increase in time just to download because, you know, it takes time to download a whole GNOME system if you wanted to use GNOME. Alright, that wasn't too bad. It actually took about 3 minutes and 39 seconds total. That's including downloading and everything on my connection. Now, um, I am following this rule. This is the stuff that I put together on my little snippet box from my um, uh, Pi Hosted. But I will leave all these notes in a GitHub. This way you can just follow along if you are missing something or you can't see certain things. So yeah, this is what I'm actually using on the, um, as a, a guidance. So I'm just explaining it as I go. Now that everything is installed, we could generate the FS tab, which is the file system. So it's gen FS tab dash U mount two carats mnt etc fs tab so it's going to generate the uh, the fs tab for you and now we could do arch ch root into mnt so we're going to jump right into that environment so you can see it changes from that root arch iso to this root that has no color to it so let me clear the screen so it gets back to the top and you could see from here we're going to start doing the time. That's the most important part at first, or you're going to get some weird locales and stuff like that. Locals. Yeah. Anyway, so date time, uh, time date CTL dash, I mean, list time zones. Now I'm just putting this here so you guys could see what are the time zones and what you need to use uh, for your area. But for me, I would use uh, America and New York, I believe. So hit Q to drop out of it if you need to. And we could do time date CTL set time zone and type it out as you see it. America, New York. That's including the caps and everything. Once you're done with that, you nano into ETC locale gen. And in here you look for US or depending where you are, uh, you look for EN, then US, and then UTF-8. So I found it right here. Close out of that. And echo that language. EN US dot UTF-8 into ETC local config. And export lang equals enus.utf-8 and then echo this is when you want to whatever you want to call it so i'm going to the original one that i had was called alarm because it's arch linux for arm uh, this one i'm just going to call it arch and i'm going to put that as my host name so etc slash host name and then we need to touch our hosts so uh, touch slash etc slash host. And in here, we will nano that file. And then we just add the 127.0.0.1 as local host. Uh, if you got IPv6, then you do that. Uh, two colons with the one and then local host. And then you also wanna keep your name in here too, just in case you're calling yourself. So I'm just gonna call this arch. 
So now that we're done with all that, let me clear the screen again. We're gonna have to set the password for our newfound account just to make sure that we are able to get in. And then we're gonna do pacman s and we're gonna install grub along with EFI boot manager MGR. Resolving dependencies, let's install that. Once that is done, then we're gonna to have to install our grub. So let me clear the screen again, or I could use control L, but uh, clearing the screen, I'm gonna do grub install dash dash help. Okay, here would tell you what your target is. So since we are ARM EFI, uh, ARM64 dash EFI, that's what we're gonna be using. So we're gonna do grub install target ARM64 dash EFI boot loader ID equals grub EFI directory equals boot slash EFI. Oh, you know what? I forgot to mount it. So make dir boot slash EFI. I skipped this step by accident and didn't even see it. And then we're gonna mount dev SDA one to boot EFI. And then now you can run that same command that I just ran and it shouldn't give you an error. All right, to finish that off, we're gonna use grub make config dash O slash boot slash grub slash grub dot CFG or config. It's gonna generate the configuration files that we just did. And now we do pacman s sudo because you always want sudo. We're gonna install that and we're gonna add a new user now. So for me, I'm gonna use user add dash m don and we're gonna set a password for don, okay? And now we're gonna add them to the group. So user mod a, a capital G wheel audio video store storage and then we're going to put that under the username don so now we're added into a few groups and because we are we have sudo or, or sudo we need to edit the sudo or file so vi sudo and this is vi if you want to use nano you can but from here what you want to do is look for the wheel um because we added ourselves to the wheel group so you want to what you want to do is hit i for insert delete those two comments up in front escape to exit out of that colon write quit and there you go now if you're in the wheel group like i added ourselves to you will have super user access as well so from here on we do let me clear the screen but we're going to do pacman dash s x org okay we're getting into the graphical stuff now and net work manager we're going to default into those it's going to download about 80 megs of stuff um this takes honestly i don't even know how long this takes shouldn't be that long because the original install was even longer than this so this should only take four four or five minutes i don't know All right, that actually took like about two minutes. So it wasn't that long. From here on, you have this uh, decision to make. So you could do pacman dash s, either gnome, and gnome would just install everything you need, which is GDM and everything that's behind there. But I would highly recommend using XFCE4 instead. So I'm gonna install XFCE4, XFCE4 goodies. And if you are gonna use XFCE4, you're gonna need light DM. So, I'm just gonna let that go. Default is all, default is Jack, and let that install. This has a lot more files, so I'm just gonna let this go. It shouldn't be as long because it's only 99 megabytes to download, but I'm gonna let this go for a sec. All right, here we are, we are back. That only took about like three minutes or so, so it wasn't too bad, but we are at the home stretch now. All we have to do now is enable 
the light DM service and network manager, and we are ready to reboot. So we're gonna do system CTL CTL system CTL uh, enable light DM dot service, and we're also gonna do system CTL enable net work manager it is case sensitive did i do a typo i did there you go and now we could exit the ch root unmount the mnt unmount oops you mount mnt if it's busy you could you mount dash l slash mnt and then now we could shut down now. The reason why I'm shutting down is I still have to detach the CD-ROM, so I'm forcing this to shut down. And now I could go into hardware. Um, I could go into the, where is it? The CD-ROM and edit this to remove, do not use any physical media. And then also just for giggles, I would go into boot order and remove that from the boot order. Actually just move it to bottom, hit okay. And we could start this back up, jump back into our console. And if everything worked out correctly like it should, you should be presented with the desktop and a login. Oh, there you go. Our grub is working. So that means the EFI is loaded. It's gonna load the image. Give this a second. This does take a while to dis populate the display. It's doing something, you can tell. So you can log in for the first time. I got XFC installed here. Uh, you can play around with the resolution. I do have like a 720 resolution right now, so it looks a little janky, but it still works. If I open up, uh, oops, not this thing, but my file, it's really responsive, and this is still booting up. Uh, maybe if I go into is the system, and I have my task manager, I could show you guys on first boot, I'm only using, with the file manager open, 293 megs of space, I mean of uh, memory, and I do have two cores in this version as well with two gigs of RAM. So it actually is, it runs so well. It just, it just runs so well. Now it does take a little bit longer to load an application. Like right now I just clicked on Firefox and there we have it. If I wanted to go into Google, which I practically am in, um, loads pretty good. It's very responsive, especially for a VM. And yeah, it, it works really well. Um, videos don't play that well, obviously, because there's no video acceleration. So if you're going to watch YouTube videos on here, it's not going to work. It will load and everything, but it's not going to work that well. Otherwise, it's super responsive. Um, I could open, I don't know, let me see, an accessory. Let me open, say, mouse pad. Let's see that. Now, again, I have a lot more stuff installed in this one. That's why the storage I'm not really showing, but I can show you what I got. Uh, so I can go into disks and here I have multiple applications loading. You see that? And it still runs pretty good. So there we have it, installing Arch Linux into our Proxmox Raspberry Pi. So if you have any questions about this or having a hard time, hit me up down in the comments below or hit me up on our Discord. So, you know, we could chit chat it's faster there. And I always miss comments anyway because of how YouTube works. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.